All my life as a little girl, I could draw most of anything I seen. And I was very creative as a kid. I have felt bad, and I could sit down and start looking at a piece of artwork, mine or whose ever, and drift off into it and, and, and forget about how you really feel. You know, when I paint something like this, my mind is free. I'm free. I have a pretty good feeling inside. And if my mind is free and clear when I start, I always see the difference in it. My, my mentor is Harold Newton. But Harold, the first time that I saw him, he had a, I don't remember what kind of car he had, but it had a flame on it where he had some fire, like fire. And this is when I learned that he was an artist and he showed me a painting he had in the back of the seat. I was probably around 17, 16, something like that. I, I wasn't that old. So then one day I saw him painting in his yard and I stopped. I asked him what he showed me and he said yes. So he tacked me up an 18 by 24 piece of ups and board and he mixed all my paint. I didn't really like the colors, but he was the artist, you know. So and I, I went on and he told me what to do and I did it. And I didn't know how to make trees, the palm trees, no kind of tree really. He took and put me two palm trees in that co-face in each other. And that was my first assisted painting and I just kept blundering ever since. Now this part here, I have to cross it out because it's not true. See, Harold was never my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> he took me on a dinner date, not a lover's they, date. They got a little reckless with the truth. Yeah, huh? they, they did. So they dated for a while, although they did not <laughs> last. That's not true. He was the first artist that I remember seeing and then later I I think I met Blood, I met Castro, I met all the rest of the artists. As the only female artist in the Highwayman, I really got joy out of my painting and being around the guys. Fort Pierce was an orange grove city. Most of the guys would go out and pick fruit. But then when Harold Newton come on, I never remember Harold picking fruit. He come from Georgia. And when the rest of the guys were out in the field, he would get out there and paint. Men's and women's was working in the orange grove. Some of the women could pick, pick just about as much fruit as a man could, more than a man. But I never picked fruit because it was too many thorns. Some of the thorns on those trees were this long. It's pretty hard labor, pretty hard labor. It wasn't me running from the orange groves or anything, which I never ran to it either. <laughs> I, just, I just love art. The Highwayman, if you're familiar with it like I was, that was, you know, Chris Christopherson, <laughs> Willie Nelson. I'm a country music nut. Um, those guys, that was the Highwayman that's probably more popular in the U.S. Well, the term itself is pretty old historic. If you ever see the video, the stagecoach robbers and those guys coming and taking jewels, taking what they will from the carriages and moving on. It's taken us about 10 years to clarify the Highwayman painters are artists that did not steal from people. They went out there door to door. That's why they got the name Highwayman. You're going door to door to sell the paintings. You're knocking on doors. You're standing roadside, curbside with your paintings. Yes. They used to set them up. 
That's right. On the side of the cars, on the streets. We were called hotel art, motel art, and nobody would take our paintings in galleries. I didn't know how to sell them, so the first time I think I went out to sell by, my, by myself was after Castro, after Livingston Roberts, they wanted to go sell one day, they didn't have a car. And so they said, well, man, we need to make some money. So, so we don't got, we got no car. I said, I got one, I'll take it if you help me sell mine. I said, okay, let's go. I jumped in my car, went back to the house, got my paintings and all, got on the road, we went up to Melbourne. First painting sold was one of mine. I really didn't want to be an artist. I wanted to be a salesman. Because if I can sell ice in Alaska. Yeah, Blood was actually the only real salesperson. <laughs> he would go out and get the money. One time he said, how much you want for it, Mayran? How much you want for it? I said, well, all I can get. Said, no, 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 tell me how much you want for it. <laughs> me and Miss Carol, we used to have a lot of fun. Her daughters and them used to go with me to sell sometime. And people would have their big dogs in the yard and they get at me and when I'd be going up to the house to sell their paintings. Mary Ann, uh, daughters them would just bust out and start laughing after I get up and start running. They had the door locked and I'm hollering at the door saying, open the door, open the door. None of them never gave me a problem, you know, because I was what you might call a tomboy and I could fist fight, I could wrestle, and you had to be a show enough a good man to throw me. And if you didn't mess around, I'd whip you. <laughs> and that would be <laughs> so therefore I was never afraid. You know, this gave me some courage. And I wasn't afraid to tackle a bear if I had to. They have given me ultimate respect. And if one didn't do it, I could earn it myself because I We need more of that, don't we? I had some muscles. <laughs> I treasured wisdom and I treasured strength and I could I could I could do pretty good. Hey, Rand was a nice, nice lady. Well, she had to be, she come to be a pastor of the church, <laughs> leading the people. <laughs> we all see Jesus, we sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven. I can't paint a painting without putting, thinking of God because he created the earth. And a lot of times I have been working in my mind. I couldn't sell my mind on anything. And I just, I just tell us, all right, Lord, here I am. And this may sound like a joke, but I've done that. And, and when I started, everything just started to fall in place. And some of those paintings have been some of the best that I've done. And a lot of people may not understand that, but it's, it's very true. What am I painting? Backwoods, stretch around a little fish creek. Cows might drink out it, the birds might go and nest in it at night, or whenever they get to. There's one of those regular areas in Fort Pierce. They might not even find it now, but most of this stuff is gone. You know, it's a, it's a thing. We're trying to capture some of the things of the past. It's just amazing. What's amazing? The beauty that God has created, you know, and man come along and destroy it, tear it up. Royal Ponce, and it's a tree. They used to be very flourishing around here. They had them everywhere you look, you can see four or five and six at one spot. And then something happened. I don't know where it was the weather or what, but something happened and they didn't it stopped growing like that. You take like some time I go down certain streets that I haven't went out in a long time. And it just I almost looked like I'm lost. They started painting these paintings in the early 50s. And with these paintings, you know, it takes you back. These paintings are the history. Oh, drinking all the wine. Oh, drinking all the wine. Civil rights and stuff was going on. And I've been out selling paintings but I never really let it get next to me as to what might happen. 
But it was really, it was a really terrible time. You know, some places we couldn't go. If you were waiting, you were taking a chance, and the thing is, some just didn't go. Well, it was, uh, it was divided in this era. In the early 60s, uh, you didn't find too many black salesmen. That's why some of the times it was, uh, wasn't always easy because they wanted to know what these uh, little black boys doing walking down the street with some paintings. People didn't feel like uh, uh, a black person could come up with nothing that looked that good. Some of it I don't even want to think about. Racism. Yeah, I don't want to think about some of it. Sometime you might knock on a door and ask them, say, uh, I have some paintings, want you to know what you'd be interested They said, wait just a minute. So I'll be right back, so I might want some. And when you come back, they have four or five polices with them. You go across this canal here, most of us on that side was white people. On this side was most of black. Oh, I've been in jail 185 times. But I always was a big talker. Most of the time, I talked my way out of it. It was a lot of bad times, sad times, uh, poverty-stricken times. Um, they call redneck or whatever times. And, but it's some things that you learn to live around without getting caught up in it. Life is just what you make it be. It can be beautiful and it can be entangling. I know how you see it. The phenomenal thing about mother is that she's passionate about whatever she does. She has to understand it. Intrinsically, she's um, since she was a little girl. She she has to know how things work. She would take things apart and put things back together. So she has a very philosophical, scientific mind that drives her. I used to practice doing things that others said they couldn't do, picking locks. I just thank God I'm not a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you get in this one. Go ahead. Lord, we realized that without you, there would be no food, there would be no Thanksgiving. And we're thanking you today on Thanksgiving because we are grateful. Amen. 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 Get it? My first art exhibit was on the bulletin board at, at uh, Means Court Elementary School. I was in the third grade. And that was my first art exhibit when I think about it. <laughs> I didn't get in the gallery, but I got on the board. <laughs> Y'all give me something to drink too. I'm hungry, please. And in my life also, I had responsibility that the guys didn't have. All of them had children, but they were by different ladies and they were not kids that they had to sit up and babysit and pin on diapers and feed fixed formulas. When my ex-husband walked out the house, I think my baby was five years old. My hands were full, so I couldn't get out and run like the guys did every day. I distinctly remember her always stopping painting, wiping off her brushes and so forth, and jumping in the car to run us here, to run us there, run us to school, run to meetings, and then going back and resuming or picking up where she left off. I was able to raise uh, seven children, single parent. And I thank, I thank God for it, and I thank the people that helped me make it possible. Because if they hadn't bought them, it wouldn't have been. And uh, you, you can't get up on the porch without stepping on the steps, so. Be God's giving. No matter how you try. This is where we started. This building, actually, a hurricane come through and tore down a packing house and they was giving away the lumber and stuff. You don't know like I know. Oh, you don't know like I know. Oh, you don't know like I know. Oh, I know, I know. So the floor in here, is a, it 
have two floors, a subfloor and a top floor. And they did it like that so that, you know, not the concrete so that when people shout, they could hear the shoes and, and you could take a, a stick or something and hit the floor and help make some noise because it didn't have no, no, you know, like all this music people have now. So just make and do it what you had. Whatever it took to bring that buck into the house, okay, I'll hammer, sh I'll shingle a roof today. Uh, I'll go and tow a car today. She doesn't believe in the word no or stop. Most ladies like to fix up the hair, rouge up the mouth and powder up the face and fix the fingernails and, and that's all right with them. But me, myself, I always desire that my money was better than any money that anybody could give me, husband, boyfriend, or whatever. I earned it. I knew the value of it. I watched how this woman who's supposed to be, who grew up in a time where you're supposed to be wearing the aprons and minding the kids, and your husband goes out and makes the money. Well, my mom raised seven kids on painting, on art. I believe that my responsibility made me a better woman. But I could have gotten to the point in life and said it can't be done, but I just found out it can be done, and it was done. It's a happiness to me, even though it may have been a rough spot. When you can find happiness in something that's terrible, you either gotta be crazy or have a lot of good sense. I think I had good sense. <laughs> that book that Gary wrote was, was actually, uh, it was like a beacon to a ship out in the middle of the ocean. It brought us into land, and I, I'm grateful. I consider it like the, you know, there was a California gold rush when everybody was rushing out to get the gold. It was a Florida art rush. A lot of people had thrown paintings in the garbage, taken them out the seat and put them beside the road. And when this book came out, people went to start back looking for what they had thrown away. You'd have to see some of these people, the expression on their face. They looked so hurt, they looked so down, it looked like they could whip their own self. So they, here I am with a treasure in my hand, and I just threw it away, you know? The same paintings that I was selling back in the days for $35 and $40, I seen some of the same paintings sold for ten and 20000 He found a diamond in the roof, and it got polished up, and then everybody could see it for what it was. We don't have to go around and sell like we used to. Uh, people, when I, the same people that I used to go out and knock on their doors, they come knock on my door now. And we were noted. We are historians of the state of Florida. We went into the Artist Hall of Fame in 2004. They made a, a, a trophy for us, and we all went up to meet the governor. I am one of the actors here at the History Center and was asked last year to portray you. You're the only character that's alive that I portray. <laughs> and, no other that, woman? and you got to stay there. No, I, okay. I portray other women, but they are deceased. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm so glad and please stay in good health, okay? I did my best for the grace of God. Yeah. Queen of the road. <laughs> yeah. That's what they say. We have had proclamation days given to us in Tampa, uh, Eatonville and they even did something in Fort Pierce. Can I have a picture of Hans? Because I, I think your Hans speaks. So my hands speak. <laughs> <laughs> and I just about fell on my shoes when I saw the price of it. I said, I gotta have it. And I said, I'm just hoping Miss Marianne has a small one that I can afford to get. <laughs> I always want to feel that the price I asked is fair. I have to value them more because I'm actually putting more of me in it. There was uh, some elderly people who wanted to paint one day. They didn't have quite enough money. I let them have it anyway. These were some of the happiest people when they left. It's not all about I me. Mean, it's not all about the mighty dollar. I know we got to have some money, but uh, to see laughter and happiness on a person's face. People take life for granted. We see the sun rise, we pay no attention. We see it set, we pay no attention. We feel the wind blow, we pay no attention. We don't even know how blessed we are just to be able to smell. Just to smell.
I either stand up or fall down. And I've always been determined to stand. And I feel like a situation is no, no rougher than you let it get in your mind. Mentally, I've, I've conquered a lot of things mentally and I don't have any regret. But I know it wasn't easy. I know it wasn't easy, but it looked at it and made it easy. I made it easy through the mind, you know, I guess. I don't know, but I've never felt like a job was too hard for me to try, even if it was digging ditches. So this was nothing different, it was a challenge, you know? And I've always felt like I could win, and I did. Oh, 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 oh.